earlier. I am Brian McIntosh, the Regional Director of the PGM products here at Genscape. I'm joined by a senior analyst on our, on our PGM team, Diana Chiangwa, and she's going to go into some of the uh, additional details and examples for us in, in just a few minutes. So in terms of what we want to talk about uh, this afternoon, we have uh, about a 20 or 30 minute uh, presentation uh, for you going over our, our new UTC tab. A um, couple things I, I, I want to mention before we get into the, uh, the agenda. First off, everyone that registered will receive an email uh, shortly after the webinar and that will include a link to the, uh, to the recording of the presentation that you can forward over to to anyone else within your company that you think might be interested. Uh, and you will also get, uh, along with that, a copy of the, the slides from this webinar that, that you also can feel free to, to pass along to anyone that you think may be uh, interested in this information. Uh, the last kind of housekeeping piece is going to be over on your right-hand side of the, the GoToWebinar, there's a little box where you can type in questions if you'd like, uh, if you have anything uh, that you'd like to um, that you'd like to, uh, um, if you have any sort of uh, questions, uh, that you can get some uh, some further details on the, uh, the the webinar itself. Sorry about that. It's not going back for me. Sorry, one second. Just dealing with some technical difficulties. Uh, so in terms of the agenda, uh, the first piece we're going to go into the, the UTC tab itself for, that, we've, uh, that we've created in our next day reports. Uh, we're going to walk through uh, the, the, the tab itself and, and what's encompassed there. Uh, the next piece we're going to go into the three separate parts and we're going to use some examples uh, using previous day, uh, understanding previous day congestion, recognizing ongoing um, recognizing ongoing constraints and, and then identifying any new opportunities. Uh, the last piece we're going to talk about is look at some of these new PGM interfaces that, uh, that have recently been created this, this past year and, uh, and, and a couple that are actually just recently going into, uh, going into service and, and talk about some of the opportunities and risks around them. And then we're going to wrap up with uh, just a summary of all the information. So now getting into the, the report and, uh, and a little bit of a walkthrough, uh, first to talk about kind of why we did this. Uh, when, we, when, when we talk to our customers uh, about our, our, our congestion analysis, over the last kind of year or so, it's been very common that, that a lot of our customers are looking at uh, up to congestion and using up to congestion uh, for their, for their uh, trading in, a, in, a, in their daily process. And I think the, the chart on the right really illustrates that uh, the, the recent growth in, in up to congestion over the last couple of years. Um, the, the, gra the chart is from, from Monitoring, Analyti Monitoring Analytics, um, the, the group that puts out the state of the market for, for PJM. Um, and you can see that the, the blue line, the dotted line is the average uh, hourly megawatts that are bid in up to congestion. Uh, you can see this past uh, January, you had almost 250,000 megawatts per hour were bid in for up to congestion, and over 50,000 uh, megawatts have been cleared on average each hour in uh, in, in the past in the past uh, month. So the current reports that we have are are, are showing the uh, the um, the the constraints that we look at, um, but they haven't focused more on the day ahead and real time movements. Of, of various nodes uh, within PJM. Um, what, we've, what we've gone and done is created some tables to, to help customers understand the, the impacts of the UTC nodes and strategize uh, for, for, the, uh, for the upcoming days uh, in, the, uh, in the congestion market. So, so what does the report look like? Uh, the, the the chart the table here is you're seeing is uh, just the initial piece of, of the report. I'm going to go into it a little bit. It's really a, an extension of our of our current congestion reports. But it, what it does is it takes our current uh, congestion tables and, and, and kind of 
repackages what we're looking at, and it really looks more at your your source and sink pairs uh, for for uh, the different constraints. It's also going to explain what the drivers are and give you some commentary on the specific day ahead in real time uh, impacts. So to look at where you can find the congestion or the UTC tab in our in our report, <clears throat> you can see here. Uh, this is an example of our of our next day report. Uh, and right there in the middle, just to the right of your congestion, you can see UTC analysis. And it's broken into three different components. Um, the, the first part is looking at your previous day, previous day uh, commentary. Uh, you can, it's broken down into the off-peak and the on-peak. And you can also see the, high, or the lowest day ahead sources and the lowest real-time sources. And then your highest day ahead sinks and your highest real-time sinks. Now the really valuable part here is going to be our daily commentary. We go in, and, and Diana primarily, who you're going to hear from in a few minutes, goes in and looks at all of the congestion that came through during the off-peak and the on-peak and, and identifies what constraints were moving which specific sources and things. Um, and here's, you, here's where you'll get some commentary there. Your, your, second, your second piece to the, the tab is going to be your continuing risk. Here's where we're looking at the constraints that seem to be hitting most days. Um, we're identifying a few things here. Uh, what the constraint's name is, what time of day we think it's most likely to post, what the driver of the congestion is, uh, if, the, if the, the, the driver is a planned outage, uh, whether it's generation or, or transmission, we'll, we'll talk about when we expect the, the line to come back into service. Uh, and then we get into the top sources and top things. Uh, now there's a few things to note here. Uh, the first is we're, we're primarily looking at real-time impacts uh, to, the, to the different sources and things. Um, <clears throat> Diana's going to get into some actual examples of congestion where um, you know, there may be the opportunity to reverse this in the day ahead. Uh, and, and you may look at this from, a, from the opposite perspective. But, just for, the, for, for everyone's information, when you're looking at this part of the report, we're looking at from a real-time perspective uh, where, where your sources are getting your downside in the real-time and your sinks are getting the upside. The other component to this is your average shift factor percentage. This is, for example, when you look at Seneca uh, congestion, when we find it, when we've isolated it in the past, uh, if you use Seneca, if you look at the Seneca node, 99.92% uh, of the shadow price um, gets put on uh, the Seneca node. So they get upside uh, of nine, over almost 100% of that shadow price uh, goes to the MCC for, for the Seneca node. The, the final piece and probably the, the piece that most of our customers find the most value in is, is our new opportunities. This is where we're going through our databases and looking at what, what certain outages have driven different constraints. Um, and now a lot of you that are familiar with our, our, our Power IQ product that has uh, congestion analysis, you'll see a table very similar to this, but where we're taking it and repackaging it more for a UTC trader, you're getting that uh, source and sync pairing and the, uh, the shift factor percentages in addition to when we expect it to hit. Um, the, the last piece I want to note here is you can see here in the, the, the right-hand side, you see Lexington, Bath County is all in bold. This is because one of our ongoing constraints, which you can see up here, this Loudoun to Fredericksburg ongoing constraint, has a, a, a number of constraints as the top sources. Now these now, when you look at Cloverdale for, as a new opportunity for tomorrow, are listed as some of your top sinks. So while we're looking at some of these constraints, as isolated, we know that the reality is some of these constraints may overlap. Um, so now this is an opportunity to say, okay, well, if I thought Lexington was a really good source for the Fredericksburg congestion, well, that may not be the best node to put a position on because Genscape is also saying that Cloverdale is a risk for tomorrow and Lexington is listed as the top sink. So the opportunity may not be as great. The last piece here that, that uh, customers have had questions on. Oh, I'm going to slide up. You can see here in the middle is you can see that there's some grayed out pieces 
with Perryman and Wagner and Crane, these are actually uh, sinks that, that you're, are not eligible uh, for the Bagley degradation. So you aren't actually eligible to use Perryman or Wagner. Um, so we gray those out. And for this, this constraint, con constraint, we're suggesting that, that your Brandon Shores is going to be your best, uh, your best sink for the, uh, for the Bagley to grace it. Now getting back, back into the report itself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it over to Diana. She's going to spend a, a few minutes with everyone going over some specific constraints, how we look at it, and, and talk a little bit about um, the, these it, actual constraints and, and go into the, uh, the details of, of, uh, of how we're viewing these, these constraints in both the day ahead and the real time. All right, so uh, to start off uh, the section, we are going to look at a few constraints, uh, trying to highlight how we analyze uh, these constraints in our pre previous day uh, uh, recap of the, uh, of, of, the, of the report. So just looking here at the Oak Grove to Galesburg as our first example. And uh, Oak Grove to Galesburg is, lo is located right uh, in, um, in Illinois. It runs uh, north to south and uh, is a constraint that is a very popular one that we see uh, you know, pretty much every day, I would say, in the in in the day I had. So, um, very popular constraints. And here we're trying to highlight um, uh, some of uh, how to uh, capitalize on uh, on those constraints, particularly if you think it's going to be a um, a day I had risk or more of a uh, real time uh, having the uh, the uh, more profitable profitable position. So, in this chart, we're looking at um, the output from. Um, um, MISO uh, North Wind, and this is a very good indicator and forecaster for when we'll see uh, this constraint in the real time, particularly. So um, in the gray shade, uh, that is the MISO Wind, and uh, the blue uh, is showing the shadow pricing uh, in the diehad, and uh, the red is the real time shadow pricing. And here, what we're trying to show is that when um, we have um, MISO uh, North Wind uh, reaching about six, uh, six gigawatts or so, this is when you're likely to see uh, this uh, constraint uh, really be a strong driver of real-time pricing. So this is um, uh, so. How this, if you look at this uh, chart, you can see that on uh, days that we are seeing MISO North Wind reaching six gigs, we have the red going above the blue. So otherwise, you can assume that you know when we don't mention this. Uh, MISO wind as an output will likely be seeing more of a uh, day ahead uh, shadow pricing. So this is um, more of an everyday thing where you have um, the Quad Cities uh, on the on the south side and the Bishop Hill um, uh, on the on the sink side. But definitely looking this uh, in the reverse direction, where um, most likely if there is no wind, you will be more profitable if you went uh, with the position in the day ahead. So uh, this is just an example of that one. Another example we have here is the base flow to Hubble. This was a constraint that we saw uh, quite a lot of at the beginning of the summer. So as you can see, we have the, the real-time um, uh, shadow prices uh, just in the month of June. And uh, since then, we've seen more of this constraint. Uh, in the blue, you're seeing that there had uh, shadow pricing of this constraint uh, since, all of, since, since July. So um, we have here the best correlation we found is VOK load. So that's what you that's what you're seeing um, as the gray shading. So I think the story here is really just that you know um, PJM has really been managing this constraint more in the day ahead. It's been something we see pretty much every day. So again, this is when you want to short the day ahead and um, have that as your more profitable um, more, more profitable uh, position. And uh, at the bottom of the, these charts, you can see what we would have written about these constraints in. In, in, in our report, so uh, just a little blurb at the bottom there. Then moving on to the next section of our report is the ongoing congestion. So a couple of examples again here. Uh, to start off here is the Seneca interface, a bit of a surprising one that we started to see this summer. And um, it's been uh, quite a big driver of particularly three, three uh, nodes in TJM, the Seneca interface, Panelac, as well as the AEC uh, kind of like a uh, node. And uh, overall, I would say that, you know, on the downside of the constraint is really uh, the rest of TJM nodes. So here we just highlight a few of them, but definitely uh, 
most of them are about uh, about at the same average shift factor. So here, uh, as our, our as our correlation, uh, we are using for our correlation, we're using the panel like demand. So that's what we have shaded here in 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 gray. So again, in red are the real time shadow prices, and in blue are the day ahead shadow prices. So um, as the the summer started, we started to see a lot of this constraint and. Really, it was it was pretty heavy in the real time. So the Seneca node was really pushed up um, pretty heavily to start off the the summer here. But going coming into July, we started to see this shift a little bit. First, you can see that on low low days, um, particularly if you look at July uh, July second, July third, uh, pretty low uh, load in Panelec, uh less than uh, two gigawatts there, and we start to see that the day had. Uh, binding during this time was stronger than what um, uh, what the real time was. Actually, in the real time, we did them in post. And then, as the load increased again, we started to see that constraint. And then, um, uh, going on in the rest of the summer, we, we keep seeing this uh, same uh, correlation where low load days we do not see it in the real time, but um, again, on the strong days we see this uh, uh, Seneca in space in in uh, proposing really strongly in the in the in the real time. So again, this is another one where we would try to uh, highlight this going forward to say, so tomorrow's at tomorrow's uh, panel like load level, what do we think will happen to uh, to the Seneca interface? So um, on July 24th, we were we were anticipating that um, the day had uh, uh, binding would uh, be higher than the real time shadow pricing, making the the day had the more uh, the more profitable position. Yeah, I think I think one one thing uh, in addition to the Seneca interface, which was a little bit surprising to us, is we we're, we're looking at this as as they uh, we're putting it into place. And and one of the thing that um, PGM notes on the uh, the information page about the the interface is that uh, it's as Diana mentioned, it's primarily for voltage support. Uh, but in and they said it would only really be used when the Seneca uh, pump storage unit is actually pumping, but. Uh, what we learned very quickly in in kind of mid to late June is that wasn't necessarily the case because we've definitely seen the Seneca interface uh, still congest when when uh, when it is generating. Um, we we did look a little bit at Seneca generation to figure out if there was a correlation between when it's pumping and when it's generating. If you could you could find out more information there. Um, I think it's safe to say that there's less risk of Seneca interface posting when the unit is online and running. Uh, but it's by no means a sure thing that the congestion will go away. All right, another example is regular Grayson, which is definitely one of our favorite constraints. Uh, we see this one um, pretty regularly, and it's a line that is um, flowing power from the north of uh, BGE, PBL, Matt Ad, uh, coming into uh, BGE there. So um, what we have, um, recognized as a identified as a really good indicator of when to see regular Grayson is output coming out of uh, the choke point plant. And choke point is located in um, in Pepco and it's about it's a mix of gas and, and coal and is about uh, 2,500 megawatts. So um, uh, this is what you're seeing in the gray shade this time. So um, on days where we have strong output coming out of um, out of truck points, we are uh, more guaranteed to see um, very little of this uh, regular grace than uh, constraints in the real time. So uh, what you do see is really strong day ahead binding on days like this, and um, not a lot of uh, risk in the in the real time. So um, again, to when we're talking about tomorrow, we try to forecast whether truck points will be um, online and available, and also. Uh, how much output you can expect from it. And to do this, we really just rely on our um, day ahead pricing. So if we forecast, when we forecast the, the, the next day, we do have a price for uh, Pepco and um, and actually Chalk Point. So if we have that, we can um, forecast whether we think that um, Chalk Point will be running tomorrow. So on the July on July 2nd, this is what we were anticipating. We did think that um, it would uh, it would be covered. The, the, Regular Grayson constraints will be covered in the day ahead, and this would result in strong pricing at choke points, uh, resulting it resulting in the the plant being committed and therefore mitigating the regular Grayson in the real time. 
And then the last section of the report is where we try to identify uh, new opportunities based on uh, changing fundamentals um, in the network. So this, this can be uh, just the changing load or uh, more, 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 uh, more likely the, uh, the new outages that will be impacting the network um, that will be on the schedule. So here as an example, we're using um, a new outage that we um, actually had uh, start today, the North Anna uh, 500 kV transformer, and this is located right in Dominion. And um, so, so we look uh, at what happens historically uh, on on uh, summer days when we have a an outage at North Anna. So there are two transformers. So uh, the most uh, likely uh, thing to happen there is that there'll be pressure on the parallel transformer or on other surrounding transformers there around Loudon. And actually, since it went out today, we've seen that, being con uh, that uh, outage resulting in Fredericksburg 230KV transformer um, uh, congestion. This was covered pretty heavily today in the day ahead. So we do think that for the next couple of months, while this, um, uh, this uh, transformer is on outage, we'll likely be seeing a lot of Fredericksburg um, <coughs> congestion, which drives up TAP and drives down uh, most of our Dominion nodes. <coughs> and then um, in terms of our occurrence, we definitely try to highlight when we've seen those constraints during the day um, um, over, you know, just using our historical data. So in the past, uh, this is a constraint we've seen in our ending 13, uh, very frequent as well in our ending 16 to 18 during those afternoon peak hours. And then the last example we have is an outage that we're anticipating at the end of August. So uh, we have the Camden to Richmond line, which is located in Pico. So uh, historically, when this line is out, we see congestion around Emily, Emily Falls, or also the Eddington to Holmes Bag Tap. Uh, these are some of the constraints that we've seen, and these generally just drive down the Ford Mill um, node as well as the uh, the Pico zone. So these are uh, some of the big uh, downside uh, nodes, some of the biggest um, nodes on the downside when we have uh, this congestion. So looking at when we usually see this congestion, it's usually from our ending 12 to our ending 18. So these are some of the things that we would highlight when we look at uh, new opportunities based on transmission outages going forward. So I think this is all we have in this section. I'm going to pass it back to Brian to talk about the PJM interfaces that have been created recently. Great. Thanks, Thanks Diana. And, uh, and, and just to just to kind of break in on that, I mean, so so kind of what Diane just went through is is a, a really good example of of what we're doing every day. And some of the people on the call here today are uh, are familiar with with our process and and how we go about diagnosing congestion and how we look at things. Um, I mean, we're just we're just really excited to to you know dig in a little bit deeper and and look at the congestion from. Uh, from a different angle that a lot of the the people on the call are doing. So um, this is this is you know just an example of of, of kind of how we we go about uh, identifying congestion and forecasting congestion in the future. Um, so so we did want to take some time going going through those those individual points. Um, and, and and we aren't just looking at um, one or two constraints a day. We're we're looking at pretty much everything that hits across PJM. So with that said, uh, we did want to spend a couple minutes on the, the new PGM interfaces. Obviously, Seneca has been uh, a big big piece of the congestion this summer, and, and we wanted to look at a couple of the new uh, interfaces that PGM has, has built in uh, this for, for, the, for just recently and, and give some, some of our analysis there and, and, and give you guys a little bit of a, a heads up if, if we are to see this congestion over the coming months. Uh, what we think some of the impacts would be and and where they're coming from. So so the the couple of pieces of information uh, here, um, the, the the real goal behind these these interfaces is 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 really voltage support and and you you'll see these conject constraints if and when um, the uh, there's load management being deployed on a sub re sub zonal basis um, for for thermal. Uh, and or voltage support. Um, so, so that's kind of what you're seeing with Seneca. Clearly there are some issues in kind of northwestern Pennsylvania in the, the Penelect zone that, that PGM is working through. 
and, and because of that, you're seeing the Seneca interface post. The, uh, the two, two new interfaces we wanted to, to mention, uh, the first is over in ATSI. It's just a little bit to the west of, of Seneca. It's the uh, New Castle or New Castle uh, interface. Um, we've, you'll, you'll, as I mentioned, you'll get the slides here, and there's, uh, there's a link at the bottom here that, that you can go ahead and add in, and, and you, can get, uh, you can go in there and click, and it'll give you the definition. There's, there's probably about 15 or 20 lines, I think, uh, that make up this interface. So we didn't want we could we didn't have the room to just list each and every one, but um, it's made up a lot of the lines here in this in this red circle. Um, some of the key things to look for, uh, I think Hoytdale to Maples probably uh, the one here in the bottom bottom right hand corner that we've seen the, as the most sensitive in the region. Um, and then we've also seen stuff in the past near Highland or Salt Springs or or up to the north at Shenango. Um, those are all. Uh, lines that are either tied to the 345s or the 138s uh, there in, in northeast, uh, northeast Ohio. Um, went into effect uh, back about a month ago on July 1st. Haven't seen any congestion there. We've mostly we've seen congestion. It's been on the actual Hoytdale to Maple line, um, but I think it's worth uh, just really keeping an eye out for this because it has been a sensitive area all summer. Um, the nodes that seem most eligible for, for UTC positions are ATSI, the zone, or the ATSI Gen Hub. We think both of those would end up seeing uh, upside uh, uh, pressure uh, if you're going to see congestion there. Uh, the downside of your source points could really be anything out to the west. So it could be um, your AD Hub, your uh, your ComEd, um, you know, anything anything out to the west uh, would likely be a good good source point to look at for, for this interface. Uh, the second one's a little bit more recent. It just went into, into service uh, last week. It's going to be uh, going to be in service through the fall of 2015. Um, looking into it a little bit, we weren't exactly um, sure, sure what indicate or what was the, uh, the reasoning behind why this would go or would finish in the fall of 2015. Uh, we speculated that possibly the Susquehanna Roseland uh, construction would um, would eliminate the need for this interface, but for the time being, uh, this is this is over in eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, it's the PL or PPL uh, West Coastville interface. Um, it's made up of again about 15, 20 lines um, from the 230 to 138 to 115 lines over in in uh, in PPL. Uh, some of the eligible nodes are Martin's Creek, the the generator, Lower Mount Bethel, uh, Hosensack. West Coastville itself, the PP, PPL uh, zonal nodes. Uh, those again would likely see upside. Again, your downside is probably everything to the west, whether it's Penelac, um, Keystone, Homer City, uh, Juniata. Uh, a lot of those those uh, points would see would see downside. Um, I think this is going to be an interesting the one to watch for for tomorrow. We actually um, uh, there's there's some new line work right here. Um, once I get my arrow going, on the quarry to steel line, uh, scheduled to go out tomorrow. I think if you see um, any congestion there, uh, you know it could be it could be on the uh, the West Coast fill transformer. It could be really on a combination of any of these lines. So uh, I, I would say if you look in the day ahead tomorrow, if you see some elevation in PPL or or at the West Coast fill point, um, it could be this interface or it could be one of the individual lines or nodes, but. Um, I think this is a this is a really interesting one, and, and may be more uh, more more uh, more prevalent, or one you'd see more in the uh, in the upcoming months, as opposed to maybe the Newcastle stuff. So, so to wrap up uh, what we talked about here, uh, you know, obviously we, we've created this new tab. It's uh, it's in the next day report, uh, and and it's right to the to the right of the congestion. Uh, congestion tab. Uh, you can uh, you can you can go in there and uh, and and dig into any of the constraints that we're we're identifying as as risk from yesterday or constraints from yesterday, risk for tomorrow, and and risk for today. The goal of, of adding this was it, it was all driven by the users. Um, you know we we had we we had done a lot of in depth congestion analysis over the last couple of years, um, but. It became clearer and clearer as as the days and months went on that 
that this was more along the lines of, of something that people were looking at, um, looking more at the, the nodal impact and the day-ahead and real-time impact. Um, the bag leader Grayson and Seneca stuff look like it, they're here to stay, uh, and 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 I think that that the day ahead and real time separation may be a little bit more difficult to capitalize on as as people realize you know chalk point is a really good indicator of of bag leader Grayson risk and Penelec no, load is is a good indicator of Seneca uh, interface risk. Um, I think the important thing to note that Diane and I realized as we were going through this whole process is, you know, there was there was really no kind of cut and dry black and white answer for these constraints. While I think chalk point uh, output and penelect load are good um, indicators of of the likelihood of the congestion, um, it's not a, you know a hard press rule to to live by because um, we have seen Bagley to Grayson still post on a really high uh, Baltimore load day even when Chalk Point is running. And we've still seen Seneca post um, you know, during some of the off peaks. Um, so, so it's really something where uh, you know, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one correlation with these. Um, you know, we really highly encourage uh, if you are customers to keep that open dialogue with us and we're, we're, we're out looking at this stuff every day. Uh, to try to get a better understanding of what's causing these constraints. Um, and if you're not a customer and this is something that you, you, you think is, uh, is interesting to you and, and, and you may have an interest in, in learning a little bit more about, um, then, then we're more than happy to talk to you and, and, uh, and see if we can set something up that matches with your needs. Um, last piece is we want everybody's feedback. Uh, we've, we've had a, a handful of customers. Uh, that have, have given us some really great feedback about the tab and, and whether it really helps them in their day-to-day -day, uh, process. Uh, and we've already made some changes just within the first uh, couple of weeks of ha having this go live. So um, if there's something more that you want to see, uh, if there's something here that you say, this is a good start, guys, but you know we, we really need to see it this way as opposed to that way, um, we're always open to the feedback and we'd love to hear uh, what what everybody thinks of this and, and hopefully it's helpful. With that, uh, you know, here's our contact information. You'll have it on the, uh, the, the slide deck that gets sent out to you. And uh, don't hesitate to reach out to, to Diana or myself. We'd love to, uh, we love to talk congestion if that wasn't evident from, uh, from this last half hour. And uh, so we'd love to talk to, you, to everybody a little bit more uh, about, about congestion and uh, and what we're doing to, uh, to help make things a little bit easier on everybody. With that, I think we, I think we have a couple of questions. Um, Diane, did you have any that you wanted to um, look at? Yeah, so one of the big questions we're getting here is uh, what really is the average shift factor? And I um, just want to talk a little bit about that. The average, uh, average shift factor that we're talking about here is an average of all the marginal congestion costs that we have seen uh, historically over the, the, the shadow prices that we're posting at the same time. So really, it's the MCC over the shadow price. And generally, this is a pretty um, uh, constant um, uh, number. I mean, it changes with any changes in the network, such as lines or any other equipment outages uh, that may, um, may, be, um, may be in place. But generally, this uh, on average, uh, it's about uh, constant. So when we say uh, the Seneca interface um, has a shadow price it has a, has a, an average shift factor of 99.9 percent .9 on the Seneca node. It simply means that if uh, the shadow price is $100, 99 of those dollars uh, will make up the marginal um, congestion cost of the Seneca node. So I hope that explains um, what that um, that value is and also how we uh, we determine it. Yeah. Um. So there are a couple of questions about uh, if we look uh, beyond the next day, because right now, you know, as, as you guys saw from that, um, we're really looking at, you know, what hit yesterday, what's hitting, what's going to hit today, and and what we think is going to hit tomorrow. So we we do look a little bit further out. Uh, we do have the the bow week and next week product. Um, we also do seasonal outlooks, um, and and. The other piece is, um, while the reports itself focus on today and tomorrow, um, one thing that, that the PGM team really prides itself on is, 
is working with our customers in the afternoon. So once you're done with the, the morning grind of getting all your bids and offers in, um, if you want to look a little bit further out with us or you say, hey, uh, you know, this, you know, Monday and Tuesday are pretty dead here. Do you mind, you know, spending a half hour, 45 minutes with me looking at the, uh, the afternoon and, and seeing what, uh, what may, uh, may be posting over the next few days? Um, that's something we love to do, and, and we have the tools where we can look at that with you and give you some of the output of, of the, the, the runs that we've, we've, been, uh, we've been looking at. Um, yeah. So there's a question about uh, if we if uh, we have this analysis for all PGM constraints. Um, so the reports themselves uh, do look at you know the the ones that we're forecasting for, um, and and we do have some internal tools that we're using to. To look at historical congestion and what what nodes got the upside and downside, um, so we usually do we run that uh, tool on a case by case basis, right? We're not we don't necessarily ha I mean we have it for all of them, but um, we look at it on a case by case basis. And um, if if it's something where you say, hey Diana, hey Brian, you know I see that North Anna transformer is going out next week. Um, can you can you do a quick run on that? Let me know what. What uh, what nodes are getting the upside and what nodes are getting the downside? Uh, we can definitely do that um, from both a day ahead and real time perspective. Um, um, I think there's one or two. Oh, okay, there there are, uh, there was I think one question about the uh, like talking about hours and and versus the um, the specific hours of when the constraints are going to post. Um, as you can see from from the or you saw from the reports, we with the likelihood piece, we usually focus on you know off peak, on peak, morning, afternoon, evening peak. Um, we don't necessarily specify that the specific hours all the time. There are definitely times where we'll run the model or we'll run run the model and we'll run the tool and we'll say, hey, this this constraint is consistently posting you know hour ending six through eight, um, and you'll see that in the report. Um, but but we do spend we do um, keep a little bit of a wide range on, on it um, and and if you do want to get more specific uh, we do phone calls with our customers a lot of the time in the morning we talk to the majority of them over the phone and uh, we're more than happy to kind of really dig into what hours seem like the the best opportunities to put some positions on and and uh, and we do that uh, on a daily basis with a with a lot of different customers. Okay, I think that I think that covers all the questions that we had. If if for some reason we didn't get to your question, um, you can feel free to email uh, or send an IM to to Diana or myself uh, here on the slides. But if you couldn't tell, we're really excited about this addition to the reports, and and we really hope that it that it helps make everybody's lives easier, uh, and and lets everybody kind of just really get down to the nitty gritty analysis as opposed to just uh, searching for different nodes and stuff. So, um, if you have any feedback, we love to hear it, and uh, we really appreciate everybody taking the time this afternoon to uh, top on this call.